Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Kuro is still a little bit confused as to the whereabouts of the Lotus of the Palace, that white flower that he keeps telling us to go retrieve from the sunken valley, despite the fact that we already have it. We're going to hopefully unstick his memory from the temporal loop it's stuck in where we don't have the flower yet. Uh, by just going off and fucking off and doing some other things. Progressing some other, uh, some other things that we need for other endings. And this is going to involve what we talked to the old hags on Mount Congo and in the Bodhisattva Valley near the Guardian Ape. Uh, what we talked to them about. And we're also going to resolve that thing with the kite today. But first, Black Hat Badger. Huh. So you made it out this way too. You? <laughs> like I said, loose ends. What are you doing here? Over there. I need to cross to the other side of the cliff, but I'm fresh out of ideas. There's no way to cross? If you had a shinobi kite, that'd do it. But it ain't easy keeping the kite afloat. Especially when you're an amateur with cargo to spare. I see. There's an assassin below the cliff who handles the kites. If he could keep that thing in the air, it'd be risky, but it just might work. The thing is, he won't take a bribe. I ask you, what's the world coming to? You see over there? There's the... <laughs> the old lady said, wind the puppet. This was clearly a different recording close. session. Now you can't take what they say lightly. In fact, there could be some shinobi technique. Making others do your dirty work. Mind control, you know? Maybe that's what she was talking about. You see over there? I'm trying to figure a way to get to the other side. There's this little tyke below the cliff who flies the kites. <laughs> if he could keep that thing in the... Well, lucky for us, the last time we were here, or since then rather, uh, we picked up some new ninjutsu techniques, one of which was called Puppeteer. So we're going to equip that, sneak up behind the assassin from Senpo, who's guarding over the kite mechanism, and activate the ninjutsu. That is vicious. It's so grisly looking. But it serves our purpose. So now he'll keep the kite afloat for us. In a position that we can actually use. But I think if we rest... <laughs> the puppeteer oh. technique, huh? First time I've seen it. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hmm. <laughs> Thought I'd finally see you crack a smile. And with that, I can attend to my personal matters. Thanks, pal. <laughs> no. Uh, what was I saying? I think if you rest, uh, or travel at a sculptor's idol to, uh, the idol up ahead, it will reset the assassin that we just puppeteered. We just jammed our hands inside their brains like a marionette. Um, and we won't be able to do anything with it. We'll have to backstab him again. So you just have to make the run all the way over here to where the hag was who gave us the advice about the puppeteer ninjutsu. And where we're going is up this huge gnarled tree. Oh, the other end. And there's now a grapple point attached to the kite, which gets us all the way across the valley to this ledge. And Snapseed. By now, they've conditioned us to know what that means. This is a cool bit of platforming. Oh, the way you traverse the world in this is so cool. But Snapseed's 
have traditionally, traditionally been a pretext for an encounter with a serpent. Well, well, if it isn't all chuckles. Did you take care of your business? That I did. All thanks to you. Whose grave is this? This? <laughs> it's, uh... It belongs to my kid. I see. After the little run passed away, all the grunt work I used to do just didn't cut it. Experiments with rejuvenation, kidnapping, responsibilities of a black hat, everything to do with this temple was just rubbing me the wrong way. So that's why you quit. <sighs> that's right. Anyway, that about wraps things up here for me. Guess I've got nothing else to do but head back to Austin and Castle. Be a damn sight better than this place. Well, I guess it's about time. Oh, you probably figured already, but Ashina, you know, she reeks of charred corpses and gunpowder, something fierce. The rats are flooding in like you wouldn't believe. Hmm. You watch yourself out there. Well, oh, you probably Ashina, you what? Man, poor Black Hat Badger. Uh, we're not done with his quest yet, but it's going to be a while before we can actually progress it further. It reminds me, I also have to make sure that I continue on with Kataro's and Anayama's. This brings us to a different side of the Sunken Valley Passage. And in fact... Right beneath us is the serpent. One of the serpents. Oh shit! The persimmon like heart of a great serpent. The great serpent is considered to be a god of the land, and the heart is believed. To be where one's spirit resides. While its shape bears similarity to a persimmon, in fact this is the red viscera of a god, it is safe to assume that eating it would be poisonous to one's health. There's a, a persimmon motif, in case you haven't noticed. So that's a fresh serpent viscera, but the old hags mentioned that there are two there are two fruits, I think they refer to them as. One is fresh and the other is dry. And where did we find the other hag? Well, it was back near the Bodhisattva Valley. First, we have to collect this stuff from the other side of the bridge, though. Dragon's Blood Droplet and a bundled Jizo statue. I'm interested to hear what you all think the connection is there. Why is there a Jizo statue near the serpent? That's, there seems to be some kind of significance. I haven't pieced it together. The Dragon's Blood Droplet and this effigy of, of parental love for a lost child. Not sure yet. Either way, we're going to head to the Bodhisattva Valley near the Guardian Ape and get the other Serpent Viscera. So, while we do that, as we all know by now, one of the mangas that influenced Dark Souls a lot was Berserk. Uh, Sekiro has a lot less of that overt berserk flavor still a little bit because Miyazaki loves berserk but there are on top of all the folklore and literature and mythology that's just bursting out of this game there are a few manga that influenced it too uh, like the lady butterfly fight was based on a trope from basilisk I learned the badass elderly ninja woman Another one was Blade of the Immortal, and you could probably figure out exactly how that factors into Sekiro just from the name. It's about a samurai cursed with immortality, and he has to kill a thousand evil men so he can break the curse. And we have another memorial mob down here. Care to purchase an offering? Another one. Where you find the departed, you find the memorial mob. Even in places where people simply drift along. <laughs> this one has a grotesque tumor. Buy an offering. And aside from a gourd, 
Uh, that's for a poison buildup. Nothing too spectacular from this one. Where you find the wherever. Hey, you there. Don't go into that cave up ahead. Inside is an old shrine where the serpent god dwells. And if the serpent god swallows you, you can't buy any more offerings now, can you? <laughs> hey, eat and made. We're going to check out the rest of this Poison Valley just really quickly. I don't recall there being anything super important down here, but I just want to give it a once over. Can't hurt to show the rest of the valley, even though there's not too much going on. Beyond the cave that mm, the memorial mob warned us away from going into. Because there's a big old snake in there. And we don't want to get a snake in our boots. Well, this scrap magnetite is not bad. Uh, uh, this is probably just an antidote, which would be ironic. Nope, like coin purse. We can't stick around in this too long. If I had been a little faster, I could have finally showed the anti-air death blow. Because <laughs> it's just a regular enemy. Oh yeah, poison buildup doesn't stop while you're in that canned animation. Uh, I would like to not get poisoned. Doesn't matter if I get poisoned. Since I have plenty of antidotes and healing on me. I would just like to avoid having to take the time to go into the menu if possible. Oh, come on now. And anything up here, finally? Nope, nothing really. Just a couple of monkeys who the sculptor and his good friend trained with. And that's about it. Now we can make our way into the cave. Where even more poison awaits, and a snap seed. I'm giving this a second take. Uh, because, I'll just splice this in in the corner. The one thing I was supposed to do, I forgot to do <laughs> on the first trip through. Oh, by the way, a few years ago, uh, that manga that I was talking about. Oh, this is so cool and creepy. Um, Blade of the Immortal. It got a film adaptation that I might check out someday. Because it was directed by Takashi Miike, who directed Ichi the Killer and uh, Gozu. The latter, I still like quite a bit. Itchy, I liked when I was younger, and in my, like, super edgy, oh, this is cool because it's brutally gory and violent phase. I don't think it holds up super well. Gozu, though, is disturbing, but it's kind of a surreal crime drama horror movie. It's really hard to succinctly sum up. Uh, and it just uses violence in a way more interesting way, and it holds up better. Gozu's still pretty good. He also produced and directed some of the Yakuza movies, and an Ace Attorney movie that I heard was pretty good. Oh, he did the live-action Diamond is Unbreakable movie, too. I need to watch that. Okay, so we can't go right there, but we can drop down. Now, here is where I screwed up before. Remember what the hag wanted us to do. Make the monkey dance. Again, puppeteer. And with the puppeteer ninjutsu, we can make the monkey dance and get the snake's attention. So that we can get past it and into the shrine. So one fruit is fresh, the other is dried. We got the fresh one, which means that this is the Dried Serpent Viscera. Denizens of the Sunken Valley worship the organs, believing they represent the deity itself. So we now have a fresh and dried Serpent Viscera. We got rice for Kuro. I deserve that. We got rice from Kuro from the Divine Child of Rejuvenation. We have all of the components of the Fountainhead Aroma. 
the White Lotus, the Shelter Stone. We have uh, the Mortal Blade so we can cut Kuro to get his blood for the Fountainhead Aroma. We have uh, just about everything we could... Oh, we have the Everblossom branch from the, uh, the Herada Estate when it was still flowering. We have everything that we could possibly need by this point in the game to get every ending that we are aiming for. Now it's just about forward momentum, actually progressing the game forward, and hoping that that haze of confusion has lifted from Kuro. My lord. Thank God. I've procured the flower for the fountainhead aroma. Oh? Was it truly blooming in the sunken valley? Yes. Deep within the valley. So that is where the fountainhead waters pool deeply. You've done well to acquire this wolf. Wolf, we've finally done it. Once we make the fountainhead incense, you can infuse your clothes with the aroma. Now, place all of the ingredients in the incense burner. As you wish. My lord. Wolf. The mortal blade. <clears throat> Fear not. I will only make a shallow cut. Would you draw the mortal blade from its sheath? Yes, my lord. Forgive me, but close your eyes. Yes, my lord. Ugh. It's over now, Wolf. How is the wound? I'm fine. I just made a small cut on my chest. So this is the fountainhead incense. It's so extraordinarily nostalgic. I see. Well, do you notice anything different? The aroma and fountainhead palace. Those words have been burned into my mind. Fountainhead palace. It's just as Lord Takeru wrote. That place must lead to the Divine Realm. But how can the Fountainhead Palace be reached? A sweetly scented bridal offering that was written on the altar where the fragrant stone was placed. Yes. You now carry the aroma of the Fountainhead incense. I believe the path leading to the Fountainhead Palace will open before you if you go to the shrine within the cave. Immortality shall soon be severed. I'm counting on you, Wolf. As you wish. Wolf, I need you to bring Dragon Tears from the Divine Realm. Yes. You must first go to the depths of the cave where you found the fragrance. You now carry this. I believe the path leads. As you wish. So we're going back to the. What was it? The Wedding Something Cave? In the Ashna Depths. The Wedding Cave Door. Where we first found the sheltering stone. And now that we have the fountainhead aroma, we may be able to find a way forward there in the palanquin. It's never going to cease to be a marvelous sight. And every time I come here, it's going to remind me of Nier Automata. It awaits with open arms. Okay. And now there's a prayer uh, prompt.
<laughs> That's kind of like our coming to Anorlando moment, huh? But how we got here... I bet you didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> oh, we're getting into some good shit. Just some real good shit. Can't wait. Thank you all for watching. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, just like you would in the game. <laughs> uh, check the links in the description for Twitter, for Patreon, patreon.com slash scribe. And also, thank you all for watching. We'll start the Fountainhead Palace next time. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone. Also, uh, make sure to tune in Saturday, June 16th or 15th, something like that, for the uh, fundraiser marathon for Forget Holidays. That's going to start at 8 a.m. EST and go for 30 hours on twitch.tv slash scribe D.